When I moved to New York after a reasonable amount of time, my biggest problem was that I was afraid of being deported because I am Canadian. I walk amongst you undetected and I didn't have a work visa so it made a lot of things very difficult. Without a social security number you can't even get a cell phone. So I had this problem solving technique going at the time where what I would do is I would walk around a day and every single person I came in contact with I would complain about what my issue was. It's how I got a futon, it's how I got a job at a dress shop, and it's how I was going to solve my immigration problem, of course. And it worked! I talked to a whole bunch of people and someone finally told me about their friend of a friend of a friend named Gord, uh, they're always named Gord by the way if they're from Canada, who somehow got some sort of visa and he would talk to me and I called up Gord and Gord told me all about this visa called a temporary visa that you apply to at the border and he, this, this is a visa for like a scientists and uh, business, like trades people, you know, uh, coming down here to do a one year project. But there is a couple little vague nebulous categories and one of them is graphic designer. So he suggested that if I'd ever done graphic design, which I had, I was very good at Cork, and I had made flyers for a lot of my comedy shows throughout the years, that I put them all together and uh, go to a border. He said, don't use the airport border, you know, use drive-through, and apply at the border, cost 100 bucks, and, you know, show me your portfolio, tick the boxes, and you'll get your visa. And as Gord's talking to me, I'm thinking, you know what, I can do this, because Gord sounded so stupid. It's like, I can handle it. So I put a plan in place. Now, I am someone that if I get an idea in my head, I really become a bit of a steamroller. So my plan was I was going to fly to Toronto. I was going to stay with my ex-boyfriend, Roger, because what could go wrong with that scenario? Uh, I was going to rent a car. I was going to find a friend to drive with me over the border. Then I would treat the friend to Buffalo Wings at the Anchor Pub after I'd received my papers, my immigration worked out, and my visa, and then my friend would drive me to the Buffalo airport and she would drive the rental back to Toronto. Be a one-day rental, what is that, $35? The plan was amazing. Few things had to be put in motion. First, there was calling the ex. Now, when I told him that I was moving to New York, what happened was he came over for dinner, we'd been dating for a while, things were going okay, and he said to me, I think we should move in together, and I said, I think I'm going to move to New York. And then he said, okay, I'll help you. Which just for the record is different than go screw yourself or that is totally unacceptable. What are you talking about? Or why don't I move with you? And by the way, never let an ex help you move. Never. Uh, somehow while you are boxing up all of your stuff, you will box up all the good feelings you've had for each other under that tape in those little boxes, and you'll never be able to have any hope in hell of having a friendship in the future. My suggestion is just break up with them clean and dirty, take all of your stuff and throw it on the street with a sign that says free stuff. But I didn't do that. And when I called him to say, can I come to Toronto and stay with you because now I want you to help me become uh, a more American, I knew I was really testing the length of his rope, but he said yes, because that's the kind of guy he was. Next, I needed a friend who would kind of be up for anyone, anything, right? I need someone that would drive with me across the border and kind of go on this crazy adventure and then enjoy Wings at the Anchor Pub. And I was like, who do I know that's one of these people that is up for anything? Like, really just wants to do anything. You can call them last minute and is into it. And I really thought about it, and the only person I could come up with uh, was me. And that's a problem, because I was already in the plan. And then I thought about it again. I was like, okay, there is that girl, Stacy. She was someone I used to work with. She just seemed like a little bit of a loose cannon. So I called her up and woke her up from, I think what only can be properly described as a, um, a pot nap. And I told her about this plan. She was confused by it. And I said, listen, you know, we're dry, I'll, I'll get you wings and we're just driving to the States and blah, 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 and I get a work visa. And she agreed. So I flew to Toronto. I stayed with my ex-boyfriend. I was putting together the portfolio of all of my little comedy flyers, you know, to support my graphic design work visa that I was applying for. And I could see the rage building up in him. Because it is hard to say goodbye to someone once, but it is ridiculous to say goodbye to them twice. 
And the plan was for me to meet Stacy the next day at the car rental place. Uh, before I went to bed that night, there's only one bed in Roger's place to stay. I didn't really understand what the plan was, but we ended up going to bed in the same bed. And I said to him, uh, you know, I have to get up early in the morning, so don't try anything, wink. And I could not fall asleep that night because I couldn't believe that he didn't try anything, nothing. The next morning, he followed me to the car rental place, I think just to make sure that I was actually leaving. And half an hour passed, no Stacy. We're getting to 45 minute mark and I asked Roger to borrow his cell phone. And I call her up and she does not pick up. And I call her again and the third time she picks up and she says to me, Ophira, I'm not coming. What she'd forgotten to tell me the night before was that she had joined some sort of cult. And this cult, one of the major points of this cult was that they believed that there were uh, uh, light centers in the world and centers of evil. And it turns out New York is a portal to hell. New York is an axis of evil and she was not willing to drive towards the door to Satan's home. And you know when you talk to someone crazy and you're just trying to rationalize with them so they will be on board with your plan and I was like no 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 you don't have to go anywhere near the devil's doorstep you just have to go to Buffalo. That is like miles away from the axis of evil okay? And she was like absolutely not. I'm sorry my group will never agree with this and hung up on me. And I looked to Roger because I wanted him to help but he doesn't even have a driver's license he's one of those people and he just looked at me like what are you going to do now, Eisenberg? So I went to the car rental place, and it turns out if you would like to rent a car and drop it off in another country, you can totally do that for just a mere $1,200, which I did, uh, a MasterCard bill that I'm still paying off to this very day. I was sort of beside myself. I don't drive very often, and the idea of now doing this alone started to be overwhelming. Like I was starting to reach the limits of even my own crazy plan, and we walked down through the uh, parking lot to find the car, and they didn't just give me any car. They gave me a blazing red station wagon. I mean, I am going through a border to apply kind of for a shoddy work visa, and could I do it in something inconspicuous? No, I have to have like the, a, a symbol of Canada, basically, a blazing red station wagon as my vehicle. And I see it and I just burst into tears. But Roger has had it with me and he's turned into a bit of a robot at this point and he's just repeating over and over again with no intonation, it's gonna be okay, you'll do this, it's gonna be okay. We get in the car and I plead with him to come drive with me. He says, no, but you can drive me home. And I do. We get out on the roads and I'm crying and screaming at him, saying I can't do it, I can't do it. And he's flatly replying, it's okay, you can do it, you can do it, shut up. And we are driving through his place, through Chinatown. And for some reason, there's a marathon going on and a festival and a party and a parade. They're all happening at once. And I'm learning how to drive again for the very first time through utter chaos. We are inching along and cars are coming on every angle through these tiny little streets as I am screaming and crying and honking's going on because I'm not, I don't have my signal on and people are trying to pass. But somehow we make it to Roger's house. And I finally say in one last desperate attempt, I go, okay, well, if you're going to abandon me and I have to do this alone, can you at least let me borrow your cell phone? Which I realize that is a ridiculous request. Now, super ridiculous. 10 years ago, still pretty ridiculous. And he just said no, and instead threw three cigarettes on the passenger seat. I guess because my execution was going to be very, very long. So I got on the road. And I did that thing where you roll up your window and you turn on the radio full blast and you just lose it in the confines of your car. That is one thing cars are amazing for. They're just this little tiny vessel of your own world where if you want to scream and cry as loud as you want, it's fine. And then I had to gather myself and I thought, you know what? Maybe this is like a show, you know, like bad rehearsal, great show, wonderful performance. It's going to be awesome open night. And maybe the fact that all of this is not going right is because it's all going to work out when I actually get to the border. And really, that is all that matters. And I get to the Buffalo border and I drive up to the little guy in the booth and I say to him, I'm here to apply for a visa. And he directs me to, you know, that little house 
that's all near every border that you drive through, and you're like, hey, I wonder what happens in that little house. I know what happens in that little house. That's where they send people like me and criminals. So I go into the little house, and it's like kind of like the DMV, just a very bland government office, and uh, there's pastel sort of bucket plastic seats for you to wait in, and a bunch of teller windows with immigration officers. And before long, you know, I get called, and I hand in my paperwork and my portfolio. And this man is very nice. He looks at me and I can tell from this little look in his eyes that I remind him as of his daughter. You know, maybe she's an artist as well. A graphic designer, I mean. So he, you know, starts flipping, looks at my form and starts flipping through my portfolio. And as he does, the inadequacy of it just dawns on me. I mean, it is these pages of flyers and leaflets of these comedy shows that just have ridiculous names. I mean, they're like, Ha Ha Hanukkah, and Yids in the Hood, just so amateur. But he's taking it in, and I'm thinking, maybe this is gonna work out. And then he says, okay, so do you have some uh, proof of, you know, four years working in your field? And I say, oh, well, I was a freelancer. That's smart, right? Those improv classes are sure paying off. He goes, oh, okay. Well, you know, we require that you have proof of working in this field for four years. So do you have some letters from some of the people that you did freelance work for? And I say, um, I know, um, I, could, I could call someone though, thinking, I don't know, I'll just call a friend and like hopefully they'll just be able to run with the punches. They gave me a phone. And he goes, oh no, we actually need letters. So it's okay, um, listen, just, you'll need to get those letters. So just get some letters, you know, just tell people that you've worked for, just stating that you worked for them over the years is totally fine. Just to prove that you worked in this field for four years and then we will, we'd be happy to process this and give you your visa. And I'm looking at him going, okay, so how should I do that? And he goes, well, you're gonna, you're gonna get back in your car and you're gonna go back to Canada and you're gonna get those papers. I mean, you can, you can even fax them to us and come back tomorrow, you can come back. I mean, as soon as you get them, just come back, we'll be here and just bring those letters. And I'm looking and thinking, the only way I can get those letters would be to go back to Canada and work in graphic design for four years. There's no way to get those letters otherwise. And I can't go back to Canada. Canada kicked me out. Like, where am I gonna go? I, I, I don't have this friend, I don't have a friend anymore. I, I don't have an ex, like, where am I gonna sleep? And I'm looking at him, waiting for him to offer me an alternative, but he just repeats, you know, so get in your car very nicely, go back to Canada and get your paperwork in order and we'll be here for you as soon as you have it. And with no other choice, I had to get back in the car. I started driving, I wanted to cry, I had no tears left and I, I can't believe what has happened and I don't know what I am gonna do in Canada. My entire life is in New York as I'm driving to try to find where I could turn around to join the line, and it is, you know, really busy. This is a long line of cars waiting back to go through the border to Canada. I'm driving and I'm driving, and I see a sign that says Buffalo Airport, 15 miles. And I look in my rear view mirror. I don't think anyone's watching me. Like, no one's following me. And I just put my foot on that gas pedal and I drove and I drove like just all the way I could as fast as I could to the Buffalo Air. I mean, it was amazing. I was, I couldn't believe I was doing it. I kept looking at my rear view mirror, but no one was following me. Nothing was happening. It was the most exhilarating feeling. I, I felt like, you know, I was robbing a bank and being told I was pretty at the same time. It was amazing. And then I got to the Buffalo airport. I dumped off the car and I ran to the airport with my big blue knapsack full of my stuff. And I said that cliche line, when is your next flight to New York? Which you can do and pay only $600 for that one hour flight. More money that I'm still paying off. And I got on that flight towards the axis of evil. And I landed in LaGuardia and I got in a cab and I went back to my apartment in the East Village that I was sharing with a roommate. And as I walked in, my roommate saw me and she was like, oh, that's great, you're back. So you know what that means? That means you got your visa, congratulations. And I had to explain to her that if there was a way for me to come back even more illegal, I had found it. 
I did get an immigration lawyer a little while afterwards and got the whole thing sewn up. But for a minute there, I really thought I'd pulled something off.